Hi, uh, my name is Lenore von Stein, and this is yet another episode of The Facts. And um, this is, um, I'm talking tonight to John McGuire and Benita Marcus. They both are composers of music. And, um, and listen, what kind of music do you like, and why? And why? <laughs> no, not why. What kind of music do you like? Uh, as you, you compose, both of these people compose um, what I call, for lack of endless, lack of better words, <laughs> complex music. Uh, um, music that's uh, uh, expressive and not um, expressive and personal and, and, and ergo automatically not conventional <laughs> because it is personal and expressive so um, what kind of music do you like well uh, uh, for me I like any music that's good music and I, I, I am not uh, we used to call it a, a style wars after Star Wars that there was always this battle of styles <laughs> going on and uh, I, I have absolutely no uh, prejudice about style and so I'm open to any kind of music, and you know, if it's good, it's good. If it's not good, it's not good, and you can usually tell pretty quickly. John? Uh, well, it's a kind of question that throws me into a state of confusion already with the word like, which is almost, um, uh, doesn't, doesn't, isn't really part of my repertoire. Uh, I usually don't, simply like music it calls for a stronger kind of emotion mm -hmm. or it calls forth a, a stronger kind of emotion like you know, love or wonder or f even fear sometimes if I'm drawn to to, to a music uh, of course I quite agree with what Benita just said about style but uh, like you can almost be sure if I say I like something I'm damning by faint praise I, 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 I recently encountered a, an old score that I, somebody sent me and used, I used to own it by Anton Webern mm. and uh, I read through the score for the first time I think in 50 years and I was so blown away by this piece that I couldn't work myself for three days I just walked around muttering to myself about the greatness of this piece and so can I say I like the piece I can't say that right, at right. all that wouldn't, be, that wouldn't work. it was more like uh, it was perhaps more there, there a mixture of wonder and fear perhaps a little bit like Bonacera in the Godfather you know mm -hmm. be my friend Godfather a little like that so I have my problems with liking things Bonacera they say <clears throat> Bonacera in the Godfather before they they off you uh, no, that's a, one of the characters. Oh, it's one of the characters. There's a character at the very beginning who says, I believe in America. That's, that's the scene at the very beginning of the movie. Mm. Um, where was I? Liking. I was, I was with my problems with the word you were, like. You were w walking around the room muttering after, uh, for three days after, after gleaning a, 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 after, after, a, a piece uh, of the reading, re reading the Webern score, right. So, um, what more can I say about that? Nothing what kind of, don't what kind of music don't you like? Don't you don't you enjoy or don't you want to infect your ears with? I mean, I, I, I do worry about infecting my ears. Um. Uh, can I say something? <laughs> yes, can definitely. I say something? That's what uh, we're here for. I like music. I like to be influenced by what I hear, and it very seldom happens. And sometimes a great piece will influence me, and more often, a bad piece will influence me. I'll hear something, and it's so cheap and so bad, and I can't believe the composer wrote it because I expected better <coughs> things from that person. And it inspires me to go home and, and work. <laughs> I can't tell you why. But, you know, it's just like 
I always had this feeling since I was young that I, I have to be a composer because if I don't write music and music isn't written, it's not going to extend into the future. So I always had this feeling like um, I'm keeping music alive by writing it. Mm. And um, <clears throat> I don't know how that connects, but maybe it does. I, 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 this thing about hearing something that you, you or seeing something you don't really like, or you know, hearing some music you don't really like, and it being a, a, a fuel for it to send you back to work. I mean, I'm often dealing with conventions that I feel that are that are that are coding my brain and my ability to see. You know, and, and sometimes if I hear a piece of music that, I don't know, strikes me as one of these, oh, I guess I get interested in it because it's of the convention and I want to like cut holes into it and, 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 and find the, you know, move it apart so that I, so that I'm not locked in the gate of this um, cliche. Um, um, Do you have a way of doing that, moving it apart? <laughs> I have, a, 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 so far I'm, I'm developing ways, I think, mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, just in detailing the, I do that on this show all the time as I'm making these pieces, and in detailing the thing that I'm talking about a little bit more than I was set out to do, or it's about this, well, what, what is it, what is it, in, 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 in like holding my breath and not worrying so much about how long it's going to take me to do it, and, 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 It simply more adjectives or more, you know, more sounds or more something about some little segment of it that I thought I had gotten, but maybe I got it in kind of this bare claw, claw cloddy way, and it, it and, and it needs some refinement, and that refinement to me is detail. Mm -hmm. Oh, detail! Detail is everything. Detail is everything. It is. It's and it's voice leading. It's in the voices. It's how you orchestrate a vertical sonority. It's everything. That's why we study counterpoint when we're young, to learn how to handle that sort of detail. Well, there's detail that's significant and detail that's not significant in terms of the piece. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will just throw something in to, to hopefully liven up the piece, when it's, and that's its only function. Yes. You know. Yes. And, and I find a lot of that very manipulative. Mm -hmm. And talking about liking and not liking, I do not like manipulative music. I like music that's just there, and you are allowed to go and listen to it and go into it if you want, but not something that's hitting you over the head. Uh, it's, uh, you know. hmm. how, how, how do you tell if music is manipulative? It's a feeling I get from the music, uh, that it's saying, now you must feel this, now you must feel that, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And uh, I, I, with my music, when I'm on stage, I want the audience to just, I'm not playing for them. I'm playing for me, I'm playing for a few other people that I love, and that's it, and I'm on stage. And so they pick up on that, and they join me in the process. And so they're coming willingly into it. And when you're getting hit over the head, it's not a willing thing. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, storm and drong or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it gets to be too much sometimes. I've seen, um, it seems to me, a fair amount of audiences that seem to be enjoying music that they're not enjoying, <laughs> that they're, they're, uh, uh, they think they ought to enjoy. I've seen it this in Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. They think they ought to enjoy, but when I look at them, I look at the way they're dressed and how that's, I can't imagine that they are enjoying it. And um, so, but they, and I, but they pretend to enjoy it and, and, and that's pretty awful. I mean, Where's the pleasure of that evening out? Uh, where's the thing that you take home with you? Or just, I'm so glad I got out of there, you know, out of that room while I was, oh, this is great. This is really, you know, <laughs> something. Um, and maybe that's, I mean, because music 
complicated music, again, this, these are my definitions, in, in the United States is in really bad shape in terms of <laughs> recognition and audience and funding and, you know, reviews and uh, attention, you know, and it seems to me so, like any of the fine arts, so important in, in, um, in helping you deal with in helping it uh, deal with reality, since it breaks through these these conventions that I, I was telling John, I I I, I I I teach music and art. It's occasionally in a, in a college I teach at that teaches uh, ground crew and pilots, and um, so one of the one of the first assignments I would give them is, and they're for people from all over the world, and I would ask them to bring in a piece of music that they like without words. That was a big problem already without words. So they bring in this music. It could be from China, it could be from Iran, it could be from here, from there. It was always American music. It was always American pop music. It always had this steady beat. They just had you know forced this language, you know, the the rhythm of their own language into this. You know, this is my, this is our music. It just sounded like the other music. Sound like the music I put on the radio. You know, uh -huh. uh, it's not. It's 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 generic. Um, it's and that's what. What's I? Th it seems to me that most people think music <coughs> is. Is uh, it's it's not. At least most people that I run into, it's not something that is. Is. They don't want that unique thing. They don't, it, it's not something that is, um, I don't know, that, that speaks to them in that way. It, 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 it speaks to them in ways that they already understand. Yes. I find that there's two types of listeners. One that can accept innovation and one that wants to be reassured by the music. And the person that wants to be reassured by the music uh, it will tend to listen to pieces where, you know, more classical pieces or pieces where they've heard it before so they know what's coming up. They don't want anything unexpected happening. They don't want anything unusual happening. It's a personality-based thing. And uh, another thing I, I see that people don't really understand about composers is we are not music lovers. Music lovers is like another category. It's for people that listen to music. But when you're actually making music and you're focused on making music and you're focused on the sounds in your head, it has nothing to do with who's a better pianist or you know any of that kind of like sort of sports approach to music. <laughs> Uh, but, well, can we sit where we can see the pianist's fingers, that kind of thing? I mean, you should be sitting there with your eyes closed and listening, as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing really to see on stage. And uh, it would be interesting to do a concert where you didn't even see the instruments, in a way. You know, it was like a screen or something. You know, like those electronic mm. concerts when I first started going to those <laughs> things, those weird things where you're sitting looking at two speakers on the stage, you know, and everybody's sitting there, and I thought, this is another world. I mean, this is, I, I, I didn't mind it. It was okay, because I don't really want to watch performers on stage either. I don't know what I'm looking at, you know, mm. in, uh, unless there's something about the way they're moving or, mm -hmm. you know, that, um, but, um, but that's different from looking at two speakers on a stage. <laughs> You know, it doesn't give you anything to look at, does it? An orchestra is a wonderful looking thing. Oh, it's all beautiful. those beautiful, yes, beautiful instruments. Yes, yes, yes. With yes. all those people working at all those beautiful looking instruments. And the and history of these instruments. Music? And the evolution of these instruments. <coughs> um, <clears throat> is long and complex. And, yes, and, and, and has really and, produced um, something, hasn't it? People are like, because we have what the new technology, the digital technology, the recording technology, everything that we've had since um, at the midpoint of the last century, um, <clears throat> we forget about that uh, the complex technology that already exists in every single instrument and in, in every orchestra. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes technology is not 
inventing a new box or something like that, but inventing a new way to put instruments together, a new kind of orchestration, a new kind of notation, a new kind of waking, making uh, something uh, be, be a sound object rather than just notes or something like that. So um, the, what is technology is a very interesting question. What is technology? Is yeah, it, I mean, uh, yeah, or innovation uh, we were talking about early. What is innovation? Uh, how would you well, define it? I was, I, was, I was about to ask that question in relation to what you were saying before about this apparent process of worldwide leveling of taste mm -hmm. into a single beat, so to speak. Yes. Uh, how does technology... Uh, relate to that? Is it, is it, is it, is it a can, factor that's causing it? Or it well, you can mass produce this it? stuff, right? You can go into a yeah. studio and you, you don't have to have, you, you, you have to have certain skills, but you, th there are lots of depth of taste and stuff. I mean, you can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can make a lot of money selling this stuff that's made that you can, that you can, where you can buy these skills, like Hollywood can buy a movie or something, movie, the skills that go into making a movie. Mm. Uh, uh, and the more you hit this, 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 mod, this, this level, you know, this, this, this medium level, I think the more and more people forget that there's anything else, you know, they don't hear anything else. And, and so it, it makes it, oh, we, all the shoes are these white sneakers. And that, that, does that all shoes are? Come on, we know we can make all kinds of shoes. You don't have to just make these shoes, but this is the only shoes available. So I got to pick from this white sneaker or this white sneaker with a little blue stripe on it. That's the choice. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what's, that's, that's the, call, that's the, that one of the things that's precipitating it, aside from this, the Americanization of um, temporary Americanization of the world. If that's what it is, Americanization, or, or is there some deeper, deeper thing, such as the development of technology? And if so, what can be done about it? Here I am interviewing everybody. <laughs> well, isn't it also uh, the international corporate uh, use of that development? Of, I mean, because they're the people. That's, if it, if it wasn't making money. Mm. Dead it would be, right? I would think so. That's mm. what it seems like. I'm sure. I'm sure that's true. <laughs> so. So this is something I don't think any of us particularly like. No, what, uh, and uh, uh, frankly, uh, <clears throat> from what mm. I've been reading lately, I think that there's a big, big problem with digital music, and. Uh, Within the next twenty or ten or twenty years, I think this it's going to be almost obsolete. In some ways, I think there's going to be a whole separation of music: the acoustic music, the digital music, um, the live performance, the digital recording. Because what they're finding now is, and this is this is really something <coughs> very profound, that uh, they've done tests on. Uh, music and how it affects the body and the energy uh, meridians of the body and how they're influenced by acoustic music. And we know that music is used for therapy for lots of different reasons because it has an effect on the body. And they, so they did these tests with uh, acoustic music. They did the same test with digital music. And you mean music that's been digitally recorded? Yes. Right? Uh -huh. And yeah. it turned out that in every single case, the digital music had absolutely no effect on the body. No kidding. Yeah. Know that. Did they know why that was the case? Well, think about it. I mean, it's energy. It's a wave. And if you start breaking that wave up, no matter how many bits you break it up into, mm -hmm. there's still infinite space in between. I don't understand. Well, you're, uh, you're, when you digitize something, you're just breaking a sound wave up into little bitty bits, yeah. right? And every bit is into, like into ten, is a ten, leap. Des, in, in tens, right? It's, des, it's well, it, okay. it could be any kind of okay. you know breakdown, um, but um, <clears throat> between uh, uh, between each of these, there's a leap, and in that leap, what I'm saying is an infinite amount of of sound moving, if you know what I mean. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. And, you're, you're talking and about the difference between a digital uh, a, a sample recording and a, and a and continuum. Yes, and a, and yeah. a, a pure acoustic uh, situation. Yeah. 
And um, I think just that, just that very simple thing of breaking up the sound wave uh, is enough to keep it from affecting the body mm -hmm. because you lose the, whole, the force of the energy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I, uh, I, I feel it when I hear mu digital music. I feel it. And uh, I listen to things that I used to listen. I listen to things on LP and uh, through my old uh, amp, mm -hmm. 1973 Marantz. And uh, it has an, an acoustic speaker. And it has a completely different feeling. And it's very powerful. But when I listen to it on my headphones, on my iPod, digitally, it doesn't do hardly anything for mm -hmm. me. And I I'm think quite sure that's true. Well, the the you know, high sinuses uh, are, are turned into square waves, for example. Hmm? The high sinus tones are turned into square waves when you get high enough. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a real shame because it sounds completely different. Yeah. And, 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 and I, think that, I think a lot of people subconsciously, uh, subliminally, let's say, are, are listening to music, digital music, and not liking it. But the reason they're not liking it is not the music, it's the medium. Hmm. It's not doing what it used to do. And I can remember back in 1970, sitting around with my friends and listening to Abbey Road. Every night we'd listen to music, and we always end up with Abbey Road, because it's <laughs> such a fabulous album. And um, it had an effect on everyone in the room. It was a, a social experience. And I don't feel that social experience happening anymore when I listen to digital music. Of course, you know, when we always just got our headphones on, too. But, hmm. So I'm a little frustrated with the whole situation. I'm very interested in putting out some LPs, but even researching the LP situation, a lot of them have to, you have to go through a recording studio, and then the recording studio is always going to put something digital in there mm -hmm. to break it up. So um, I don't know. How, how, would, uh, how, how would you define innovation? Yeah. Uh, Huh? Can you get a little more specific than that? <laughs> well, you know, in music as opposed to cars or something, you know. Okay. Um, uh, it, this is a term that's thrown around like nobody's business, right? It's, it's innovative. Oh, it's oh, I, even worse, cutting edge. Um, <laughs> and um, it's really something, mm -hmm. uh, cutting edge. And um, so uh, it seems so... I mean, like, cutting edge seems so, like, hopelessly suburban. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 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 you know, and you had mentioned something about um, uh, a particular funder or group fund, you know, the funding things that are better, that are tricky, but not necessarily good music, just tricky in terms of performance, or I'm not sure what you... Oh, I, I was talking about... Um uh, there's a lot of different kinds of grants that you can apply for to get commissions or whatever. And I was looking at some, <clears throat> I won't mention the, the organization, <laughs> but um, they, uh, I wanted to apply for a grant. So I looked at the, everything that they had <coughs> granted in the last three years, every project that, that received money. And every single one of these projects were, number one, not musical, and number two, uh, just novelty. They were really looking for some kind of uh, sideline novelty for music, if you know what I mean. Like a circus act. Yeah. And so if you had a serious project, it would, go <laughs> it would never get funded. Mm. You had to come up with some kind of crazy thing like, I'm going to go to Bali and record this, and uh, I don't know. It was just sort of silly. Mm -hmm. And it's a serious organization, and they should be serious about composition. And um, well, I don't they have think serious, serious power, whether or not they're a serious organization. Uh, well, uh, but that thing about the the kind of the the circus, the circus part of art business, show business, you know that that easy kind of. Um, 
way of looking at, at, at you know, what will make money, what will bring them in the door. Uh, this, you know, as, 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 as the, I mean, to some extent, audiences must have always been sort of desensitized um, uh, because the, the, all kinds of stuff has risen to the top. But, uh, it, I mean, is the desensitization and this, I don't, I have no way of knowing this, greater in this period of time that we're living in, less, about the same, uh, uh, just dif different forms, um, and, and, and what is its, it seems to me it has a political, uh, 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 pretty political, it has a political purpose, and uh, 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 to, to, to have people so sort of estranged from themselves, uh, from their fellow human beings, with not being able to uh, interact, um, you know, I mean, art is a, about communication, isn't it? You know, big communication, and I'm, my com the communication I'm getting from you is all very, I don't know, it's not, it's not, I mean, I spent my, I remember spending my, my teenage years listening. I, I mean, I, I sort of liked Abbey Road, but I didn't like a lot of stuff, and I couldn't understand what people were listening to, but I knew I had to listen just like I had to drink Coca-Cola, you know, because that was, you had to do that. Um, and, uh, but it made no sense to me at all. Drinking Coca-Cola made no sense to well, you. <laughs> it was, it, it, no, Coca-Cola was all right, you know, but it, it, uh, it, getting through a whole glass of it was, you know, a, a yeah. chore. Yes. But uh, not anymore, but it was then. Uh, but, you know, listening to all this stuff that I was thinking the other day, I was, uh, I, because I, I, I like some country, I certainly like bluegrass music because I think it's, it's, it's complex and I like it. And I, I like it. I, I don't know whether it's complex, but I remember the first time that I ever struck me that country music was really good was I was, Hitchhiking in the West, and I got into a into a into a into a truck that was two truckloads full of sheep, and the sheep were baying. And on the radio, this guy had some country music thing, and suddenly, country music really made sense. I understood <laughs> what this stuff was about. It, oh, it's, you, it, you, it, you it, could it, relate the two sounds. Yeah, to that, each other? that that not just the, just the whole the whole gestalt, you know, the uh -huh. the smells, the road, the night. The, the these twangy sounds and and um, uh, it didn't seem it didn't seem so foreign. Which it had, I grew up in New York, it always seemed pretty foreign to me. I don't know what it was about, but then I got to appreciate it. Hmm. Still, I don't know uh, uh, any definition of. I don't have an operative definition of innovation in music. Do you? No. I did set out some parameters. I don't know if I'm, I didn't. I didn't find it in time for this show tonight. Oh shoot! I don't know. If, oh shoot! I don't know if I revisit it if it's if it's if it's going to strike me as wonderful as it did. You know when I put it together.